Hello, my purpose today is to give some honor and respect to my grandfather, Mr. Arthur Francis Gushin. Art was born September 23rd, 1923, and he has passed from this world on January 29th, 2013, at the age of 89 years. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to attend uh, his funeral, and uh, I want to give some respect and just send out a little love as today is his 100th anniversary. He'd be 100 years old today. So um, I'm just going to tell a little bit about him and why I uh, have found him to be such an important part of our family. Of course, uh, this is my mother's father. So without him, I could not be here. So I definitely want to give him thanks for that. Um, just starting off to tell you a little bit about art, but before I go into it, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the hook right now, which is that Arthur was pardoned by President Gerald Ford uh, for for uh, the crime of uh, counterfeiting. So he was pardoned by Gerald Ford, and I think that was back in, uh, yeah, that was back in 1976. Long about, right about the time when I first met him when I was eight years old. So um, getting back to my grandpa now, um, Arthur Francis Gushin, here's a, a pretty good photo of him. It looks like he was around 80, somewhere in that range at this time. And uh, he was laid to rest here. Let's just read about it. Arthur Francis Gushin passed away at the age of 89 on January 29, 2013, at the memory care unit at the George E. Wallen Veterans Home in Ogden, Utah. Arthur was born on September the 23rd, 1923, in Flint, Michigan, the second of six children born to Francis Frank Pearl Gushin and Isabella Fitzhugh Thompson Gushin. He grew up during the depression of the 30s. Even as a child, Arthur was sensitive to his parents' financial struggles and would find ways to earn money so that he could contribute and help the family. Arthur was always fun, loving, and adventuresome. While in high school, he was a caller for square dances. He loved to polka dance, and he said that polka dancing gave him a sense of freedom and joy that he couldn't experience any other way. He's quoted as saying that he liked polka dancing even better than eating a nice, tender, juicy steak. After leaving high school, Art delivered telegrams by bicycle for Western Union and then got a job for the post office delivering mail on foot until he was drafted into the Army in 43 or 44. A very serious illness prevented overseas duties. After Art was discharged from the Army, he joined the Air Force and was trained in cryptography, a job he seemed to have enjoyed. Art worked for the Southern Pacific Railroad, the railroad at Hawthorne Army Base, and the railroad at Toole Army Base. And I believe this connection to the Hawthorne Army Base, this is where I met my grandfather. I was informed that that was where he lived out there on a lake in Hawthorne when I first met him in 1976. So he married my grandmother, Geraldine Breckenridge who became Geraldine Gushin. Interesting name, Geraldine, and Ger he, uh, he was pardoned by Gerald Ford. And we have a lot of Geralds in our family. That, that was prior to the pardoning, so it's interesting, right? Anyway, Geraldine Brackenridge was my grandma. She has passed as well. Much love to her as well today. But uh, he married her on October 3rd, 1942. They were the parents of six children. Well, just like his, his father before him, right? Within this family, they had six children. John, who died. My, old, my uh, oldest uncle, Uncle Johnny. I understand he was a red-haired man. Never got to meet him. Died well before I was born. But he died young at 21 years old on December 12th, 1962. Then uh, Donald, David and R. Jr. and Michael, 
who also has passed. He died of early onset Alzheimer's. And then the last was Ramona, my mother. Uh, anyway, uh, Arthur and Geraldine later divorced and uh, Art took off to, to uh, places unknown out west, I think, and left Michigan behind for a time. Uh, one of his wives, I believe he had five or six wives, one of them was named Sally Marie Hoskins. That was his wife when I met him and there at Hawthorne Lake. On, uh, he married her on April the 18th of 1976. So he had just married her shortly before I met him and that must have been in that same region. But she passed away sadly on Feb February the 3rd, 1979. So uh, he loved her and I know he spoke of her throughout his life and with great regret over, over her illness and various things about that and seemed to have, she seemed to have been in many ways the love of his life. He wished to be buried by her side in Urington, Nevada C Cemetery and his, uh, his uh, final wife honored that request. So, uh, says throughout his life, Arthur remained devoted to parents and siblings. Yes, I would say that was true. He did, did show his, his utmost loyalty to his parents and his, his brother and sister, I suppose. So, uh, he helped care for his parents in their final years and loved returning to Michigan every summer to visit his sisters and his brother Carl. Arthur married Renee Rob Meyer on April the 10th, 1983. He was a devoted grandfather to Renee's grandchildren. He's survived by four of his children, wife Renee, nine grandchildren, a host of great grandchildren, older brother Carl, two sisters, Donna Gushin, who just passed, um, rest in peace Donna, and Lois Faith. He was preceded in death by his own father and his mother and his younger sister Elaine, younger brother Kenneth, and two children. So family appreciates weekly visits to the veteran home of Don Gribble who brought Arthur the Eucharist. Hmm. So, and he's buried there in Myers Mortuary in Ogden, Utah. So, happy 100, Grandpa. Now let's just talk a little bit about his pardon because that's probably the most interesting thing for most people, I imagine. He was pardoned by Gerald Ford, Gerald Rudolph Ford, the 38th president of our United States, who was also known for being a powerful, a very powerful man there in Michigan, where we're from. And uh, I think it's interesting because I had spent a good number of years looking at, um, you know, Watergate, the Watergate scandal in U.S. history. And I had noticed many times and done videos about it, in fact, how this occurred, how, how some of my thoughts on this incident and the dates involved. And uh, so... I won't go over all that again, but his real name, Gerald Rudolph Ford, real name was Leslie Lynch King, Jr. So he was born on July 14th and passed away December 26, 2006. So for me, there is a permanent connection between my grandpa and Gerald Ford because of this pardon. So he's in the realms up there with, with Nixon in my estimation. Ford served as the leader of the Republican Party in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1965 to 73 and as the 40th Vice President under President Richard Nixon from 73 to 74. Ford succeeded to the presidency when Nixon resigned in 1974 but was defeated for election to a full term in 76. Ford is the only person to ever become U.S. President without winning an election for President or Vice President. So this is the interesting. Ford was a very special guy. And uh, 
I mean, he was a powerhouse of a man. And what's what interests me about him is his connections within the Rosicrucian communities and, you know, the Masonic groups. He rose to the rank of 33rd degree Mason after he was raised to President of the United States. So I, as I understand it, he took those vows in the Oval Office. So I don't know if there's any other president you can say that about. Uh, so that's quite interesting to make the 33rd degree, don't you think? And uh, yeah, he's the only president who he actually was raised to become vice president. He wasn't elected. And he was also raised to become president. And then he was raised to the 33rd degree. I've seen some interesting stuff on Ford. I watched when he was uh, when he was made vice president and the standing ovation on both sides of the aisle just echoed through the chambers of Congress and still echoing today. I just couldn't believe it when I watched it. Some of these uh, this old footage, if you want, if you care to look it up, you'd be blown away. This guy was president with the name of Ford. Of course, he was Leslie Lynch King born. And that's an interesting story in itself. I suppose I should go into it a little bit as uh, Leslie's an important name in my family. And Leslie Link, Lynch King Jr. is quite a, quite a name, isn't it? It's hard to imagine a president Leslie Lynch King. But uh, Gerald Ford, Gerald Rudolph Ford, that's a lot more of a name that I think a politician would uh, prefer to have, wouldn't you think so? In any case, uh, he was born in Nebraska, in Omaha, Nebraska, but he was raised in Grand Rapids. He attended the University of Michigan, where he played for the school's football team, before eventually going off to Yale. So, yeah, we know about Yale and the 322, the 322 group, and the Bushes and all those, don't we? The Skull and Bones group. He was a Navy guy, and he served in the U.S. Naval Reserve from 42 to 46. Uh, and he served as the Michigan's 5th Congressional District in this capacity for 25 years. And the final line of them, he was the House Minority Leader. Two months after Agnew's resignation, Ford became the first person appointed to the Vice Presidency under the terms of the 25th Amendment. After the subsequent resignation of President Nixon, August 9th, that was August 9th, by the way, 1974. Ford immediately assumed presidency. So he became president on 8-9-1974. And he pardoned, uh, he pardoned Nixon on September the 8th, that same year, 1974. So you have the interesting 8-9 and 9-8. Within Masonic circles, 8-9... Uh, is known to mean exactly what the initials stand for. H-I. High. The High One. He was raised to the rank of the High One. So, considering the fact that this is the man that pardoned my grandfather, I can't think of a greater honor. I really can't. So, i got to give that up toward my grandfather. And he may have led a questionable life, just as this man here no doubt did. So many of us uh, learn that life's not about exactly what we think it's about so many times, don't we? So uh, there's a lot of things I might not agree with about my grandfather and uh, how he chose his life, but that was his to choose. And God bless him for, for having that right and keeping it to himself and not letting others to uh, put any judgment on him because judgment is an illusion when we judge each other it's just a game that we play try to make us feel better so anyway Gerald Ford is quite a hero in Michigan and to some degree I feel that way about my grandfather so now I'm going to talk about the day that my grandpa was born and a little bit of our family stuff I should mention that uh, just a little bit about the family, not too much, 
and uh, let's see. Here's my grandfather's grave. Again, born 23rd of September, 1923. Buried next to Sally Marie Gushin. So, um, it's interesting and something I want to point out about the family is that two generations back are the last name, this is my mother's side of the family. So, uh, but the last name was, before it was changed to Gushin, it was Gashin. So uh, here is, for example here, Francis Pearl Gushin, this was my, my grandfather's father. And so his father was Gation, Antoine Eugene Gation. And his, and his mother was Elizabeth Thibault Gation. So both of these names I traced, I traced back very far into French history, uh, line by line, individual by individual. And uh, I found it went all the way back to uh, St. Gatian. Um, see if I can show you. Yeah, the Cathedral of St. Gatian in Tours, France. So this is where our ancestors are from on my mother's side, ultimately. Another generation back before we saw the name change from Gatian to Gushin, it was uh, Gatian Dit Turango, which means Gatian de Tours. Just like this here, you see the Cathedral, the cathedral St. Gatian de Tours. Every member of our family going back was named Gatian Dit Tarango for that purpose. So this was a uh, Roman Catholic church and my, my grandfather was uh, French, Roman Catholic. And this is in Tours, France, dedicated to Saint Gatianus, the Archbishop of Tours. So uh, a really interesting and definitely worth looking at for any of us in the family any of you in the family who don't know about it, and any of you outside of the family who are interested, just a magnificent, uh, a magnificent cathedral, magnificent location, famous world, famous the world over, an awe-inspiring edifice, and it bears. If you are a Gation, it bears your name, and you should. I think you should rightly feel have a right to have a sense of pride in that. So, interesting about the city of Tours also is that it was the seat of the archbishops. And uh, just, a, just a, the history of it is so, it's so much I can't really go into it. I'd be here all day. But it's just a, a magnificent location to be from, I think, personally. Look at this vault of the nave here. Wow. So there's a good deal about St. Gatian himself, which is based on St. Gatianus. Uh, it is uh, interesting, all these names here that you'll see. Gatianus of Tours. Gatianus. Gatianus. Gratianus. In French, Cassian, Gatian, and Gratian. I've looked up all these. Amazing. Ultimately, the same individual. It points to the same individual in all of these. And... Uh, his feast day, St. Gatian's feast day, St. Gatianus, is 18th of December. So interestingly, that is the very day on, upon which my grandfather received his pardon. So um, I think I'm going to go ahead and show you the pardon. I haven't closed it somehow. 
I have a lot of tabs open, so I'll just I'll just look it up here again, and you can do the same thing if you want to verify. Pardons granted by President Gerald Ford from 1974 to 1977. Top of the list, President Richard Nixon. Now that just happens to be my birthday, 9-8. And my son's birthday is 8-9. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, it interests me. That caught my attention, of course, when I first started researching on these things. I thought, what in the world? What an interesting uh, coincidence. I have the birth date that Nixon was, uh, Nixon was uh, pardoned by Ford. And I have a grandfather who was pardoned by Ford. And then my first son, he has the birthday that uh, Ford became president. <laughs> what do you think about that? So anyway, enough about me. I just wanted to mention it. You know, here, here's what's interesting to me. You get over into the year of 1976. It looks like, uh, did it show how many? It doesn't show how many pardons on this page, but I know it was like 240 or something like that that Ford did right around that number. So if we go in 1976 and you get to start here, it looks like St. Gatian's Day. Ford had an interesting connection to St. Gatian's Day. He chose it to do a lot of his pardons. So, yeah, what you might take from that. Anyway, so he was the second to the last pardon given. 12-18-1976. Arthur Francis Gushin. Western Washington here is where he was, uh, his crime was supposedly committed or where he was arrested. So, yeah, that was, that's really interesting. I mean, I never knew my grandfather, uh, so very little connection to him in my life. Uh, my, my, I was told that he left when my mother was three years old, at least, you know, most of the family history I got was from my mother. Didn't have close connections. But, uh, yeah, I was told that he departed when she was three and she really never saw him again until this time in 1976 when we drove out there. My dad drove out there to see for her to see him. And uh, drove from Michigan out to Nevada. And ultimately to California. But anyhow, St. Gatian's Day. What an interesting thing since his name is Gatian, right? What do you make of that? So, now that I've shown that, there was something else I wanted to just uh, pay him a little tribute because Arthur Gushin was born on Saturday, September 23rd. This is an epic day. First of all, it is the autumn equinox. You might notice, right on the equinox, the day of the day when we have equal night and day, equal light to darkness, the day of balance. So we only have two such days in the year. His is on the fall, of course. So uh, let's see what else here I can tell you about him. I, I'm interested in this date. I always look at dates and numbers. This is a hobby of mine. So, uh, September 23rd is the 266th day of the common year, 267 in a leap year. And not, but one thing that doesn't change is the 99. 99 days remain till the end of the year. 99. I have a lot of uh, things on my channel about the, the number 99. For example, the. Uh, the big, um, the next big American clip eclipse coming next year uh, on April 8th, 2024 on day 99 of the year. So I've been going on about that in videos for quite a long time now. Just happens to sync up here. I don't know why. Call it synchronicity. Now I wanted to mention about this date. What an epic date it is in history. We have uh, Drusilla, 
Caligula, Caligula's sister back in year 38. Here we are talking about a man who was president, who was pardoned by president number 38, right? And his birthday. And uh, this was Drusilla, as I have mentioned before, whenever I see the Drew, I always think of Druid, personally. But in any case, she was a woman that was deified. She was deified. So that's interesting. I'll just pull her up for a second. She was deified by the Romans. And of course you have all the, the scandalous behavior of Caligula and all that stuff from history. But what's interesting to me is just the fact that she was deified as a, as a woman. And uh, in thir 1933, <laughs> very interesting. Uh, so during an illness in 37, Caligula changed his will to name Drusilla as his heir, making her the first woman to be named heir in a Roman imperial will. So, you might not know this, but uh, President Ford, Leslie Lynch King Jr., our President Ford, number 38, prophesied. He's the only president I know of who made such a prophecy, and he prophesied a woman president would be coming. And he expected it in the near future, before his death, he said so. And I could probably pull up the video, but you can all find it if you just search it up on YouTube. Uh, woman, Ford, woman president, look up something like that. And he prophesied that a woman would come to power, she would be made president in the same way that he himself was raised to president. She wouldn't be elected. She would be elected most likely as a vice president on a presidential ticket and then he said literally that the president will die and the woman will become the president of the United States and to quote Ford uh, good luck on any men ever getting elected president again after that <laughs> that's a great quote so I really I really thought that was interesting about Ford it makes him a man ahead of his time with a vision that I have not heard a type of vision I've not heard many many presidents would have the guts to go out to go out like that. So we have his connection to Pope Calixtus and the Concordat of Worms, and also uh, interesting. Also to the uh, birth of let's see here maybe I can look it up. It's not popping up, but it was uh, showing here. Hmm. Well, I can't find it just now, so I'll just move on. But uh, in any case, he has a pretty cool birth date, and I wanted to show some of the other folks that were connected to it if I can here here we go okay Caesar Augustus also known as Octavian was born this date so this is arguably the greatest emperor Rome ever had. Outside of uh, the original founders of Rome, Augustus did more for the Roman Empire than any other, I believe. So, interesting, right? And then as I looked down through, I noticed another 
I noticed some other ones. Where, where was that here? There's a whole bunch of stuff that I'm just going to skim over. Oh yeah, here it is. Kublai Khan. Kublai Khan. So this is the honorific I wanted to give to my grandfather. Kublai Khan was born this date in 1215. So I had already pulled it up somewhere. Here we go. So I want to quote this poem for my grandfather. And I'll probably leave off with that. This is about Kublai Khan, and this was one of my favorite poems for a lot of years. I still find a lot of meaning in it. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. This is from Samuel Coleridge. The poem is Kublai Khan, also known as A Vision. Kublai Khan, A Vision. A Vision or a Fragment. In Xanadu did Kublai Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where Alf, the sacred river, ran through caverns measureless to man, down to a sunless sea. So twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round, and here were gardens bright with sinuous rills, where blossomed many an incense-bearing tree, and here were forests as ancient as the hills, and folding sunny spots of greenery. But oh, that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a cedar and cover, a savage place, as holy and enchanted as e'er beneath a waning moon was haunted by woman wailing for her demon lover. And from this chasm with ceaseless turmoil seething, as if this earth in fast thick pants were breathing, a mighty fountain momently was forced, amid whose swift half intermitted burst Huge fragments vaulted like rebounding hail, or chaffy grain beneath a thresher's flail, and mid these dancing rocks at once and ever, it flung up momently the sacred river, five miles meandering with a mazy motion through wood and dale, the sacred river ran, then reached the caverns measureless to man, and sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean, and mid this tumult Kubla heard from far ancestral voices prophesying war. The shadow of the dome of pleasure floated midway on the waves, where was heard the mingled measure from the fountain and the caves. It was a miracle of rare device, a sunny pleasure dome with caves of ice. A damsel with a dulcimer in a vision once I saw. It was an Abyssinian maid, and on her dulcimer she played, singing of Mount Abora. Could I revive within me her symphony and song, to such deep delight twould win me, that with music loud and long I would build that dome in air, that sunny dome, those caves of ice, and all who heard should see them there, and all should cry, beware, beware, his flashing eyes, his floating hair. Re weave a circle round him thrice, and close your eyes with holy dread, for he on honeydew hath fed, and drunk the milk of paradise. So with that, I'll leave off and just say happy birthday to my grandfather. Rest in peace, Arthur Francis Gushing.